Hey everyone, welcome to Wax Pack Wisdom, where we talk baseball history through card breaks and the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. Today we're opening this pack of 1989 Tops Baseball as we get towards the end of 1989 week here. Hopefully you haven't uh, shaken it off yet. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this week. Hopefully there's no bad blood with how you've uh, felt about this. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed our style this week. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> That's enough. Um, let's open up this pack and see what we got in this uh, classic junk wax pack of 1989 tops. You see the, the gum there is fully intact. Maybe we'll chow down on it later or maybe not. All right. The first card is Alejandro Pena, who was a good reliever in, I believe, a reliever for many years in Major League Baseball. Played around, was with the uh, was with the Dodgers for a long time, a good player. All right, next up is a Hall of Famer, is uh, Dave Winfield. This would be kind of at the end of his long run with the Yankees. He was with the Yankees for most of the 1980s. It's kind of funny because I don't really ever think of him as being with the Yankees, although I wasn't really around to watch in the 80s. Um, you know, I was alive, but I wasn't really watching. When I think of Dave Winfield at, uh, as a player, I think of him kind of at the end of his career with he goes to the the Blue Jays and as part of their championship teams and then you know kind of finishes up with the um with the uh, he played with the Indians for a few years and then also was with his hometown uh twins where he uh, grew up and Dave Winfield was a spectacular athlete in in the Min in Minnesota I believe in that area he um was a potential draftee and a potential player in three different sports between basketball baseball and football he chose baseball uh he started his career with the padres he was with them for quite a few years and then made his way to the yankees where he was uh, with the yankees and then the aforementioned teams i mentioned after that he um did end up with over three thousand hits and eventually made his way to the hall of fame just a, a tremendous athlete um and just a a big time superstar player in major league baseball for the better part of 20 years and a hall of famer so nice to get a hall of famer in this pack all right, next is Mike Campbell. I don't really know anything about Mike Campbell other than he doesn't look too happy. Um, there is Glenn Hubbard, who is a, um, I believe he was a, yeah, he was like a second base type guy with the Braves, a few other teams made his way to the athletics. 1989, uh, as mentioned in the uh, upper deck video we did this week, the, um, uh, the A's were the world champions. They beat the uh, Giants in four games in the Bay Area World Series. That was, of course, impacted by the earthquake that happened. Um, here's a checklist. A lot of names on there. And you know, we see Bo Jackson's on there. We see Jim Abbott, who uh, famously only had one, one hand. Um, Mookie Wilson, we don't like to talk about him. Hall of Famer Burt Blylevin in there. Uh, Cecil Fielder. Harold Reynolds, Harold Baines, Hall of Famer, Mike Stanley, Luis Salisea, both former Red Sox, Andres Galarraga as well in there. So there's some names. All right, next up is Orestes Destrada, who was a Cuban player, uh, uh, first baseman. I think he maybe played some outfield a little bit too. Um, made his way, eventually played with the Marlins. I think he was part of their inaugural team in 93. And then years later, Orestes was on um, was on ESPN. You see him on uh, on television a lot. So uh, nice player, Orestes Destrada. All right, next up is uh, Red Sox legend, hero, I guess you could say, Al Nipper. Part of the 86 rotation, the rotation that was almost completely homegrown between Roger Clemens, Oil Can Boyd, Bruce Hurst, Al Nipper. Um, they also traded for Tom Seaver that year, of course. But Nipper was a big part of that. I think Nipper was later the Red Sox pitching coach. Um, and uh, still somebody that uh, you kind of see around around the game of baseball. He was, like, relatively close with Roger Clemens. And, uh, you know, a good pitcher. Like, your classic, like, fourth starter type guy. You know, look at the stats in 86 through 159 innings. Kind of, you know, did did what was needed of him. Not like, uh, not a superstar, but sort of a mid mid to bottom rotation type guy. And uh, again, uh, did pitch in the playoffs quite a bit. All right, here is the uh, a fish special offer card for the company store. If you want to get one of those nifty shirts, maybe they still have them. Maybe, maybe not. Um, here is Mike Heath with the Tigers. Don't really know a lot about Mike other than that he uh, played around quite a bit, played for a few years. Next up is an interesting name in baseball history. 
Bob Horner. Bob Horner, whoops. Uh, well, first off, let's look at the back of the card for Bob Horner. He was a high draft pick. I believe he was the number one overall pick of the Braves in 1978. And he became, as the, what I was going to mention, and I, I swear I was going to mention this, but it's at the back of the card, and I'll just read off the back of here. Bob became the 11th player in history to belt four home runs in a game when he accomplished the feat for the Braves on 7-6, so uh, July 6th, 1986. So yes, that is Bob Horner's big, his two big claims to fame, I guess you could say, were that he was a number one overall pick in the draft. But I think more famously and more importantly, he hit four home runs in a game, which is something that uh, is that that's the record. Uh, nobody has ever hit five home runs in a game before. Um, and there's you know some interesting names of guys who have done it. Willie Mays did it. I remember Mark Witten doing it when I was a kid. Um, you know, I think Sean Green did it. Like there's been there's there's uh, been quite a few guys who've done it, but no one's ever done five. But Bob Horner is one of the guys that that did it. Uh, that hit it home runs uh, four times. And man, Bob Horner, classic '80s baseball player look. You gotta love it. Next up is Jim Corsi, relief pitcher for the A's. Uh, at this point in his career, he eventually made his way to his hometown Red Sox, as you can see here. His home is from, he was from Newton. He was born uh, born and raised there, and then eventually settled there later. Um, he again pitched uh, pitched for the A's. Pitched you know was kind of an up and down minors guy, and then made, made his sorry made his way to the Red Sox where he was a, a, a fun member of, of uh, some of those late 90s Red Sox teams. We loved uh, Jim Corsi in Boston. And uh, unfortunately, Jim passed away a couple of years ago. Um, that, was, that was really tough uh, to lose Jim. He was uh, a fixture in the Boston area, the Boston baseball community. And um, you know, he was also, after his playing career ended, he uh, spent some time doing television with Nesson. And uh, we miss Jim Corsi. He was a, he was a really colorful, uh, wonderful guy. And uh, a lot of people, uh, he, he made a big difference in a lot of people's lives. But, but he was a fun, uh, he was a good, fun relief pitcher. And again, I really enjoyed having him uh, when he was on the Red Sox. So, there is John Shelby. I don't really know a lot about John Shelby, but here is Rock Reigns. And I love that they put Rock on the baseball card. Rock Reigns. Uh, first off, I love I love every single thing about this baseball card. You know why? I the Expos uniform. Nobody looked better in an Expos uniform than Tim Rock Reigns, and uh, just like just cut, so fit. Like he's got like the he's got like the you know the, the just the look the eye black, man. Just like ah, I love everything about this card. <laughs> Tim Reigns was the man. Um, absolutely the man. If you watch our, uh, our video on Instagram this week, the reveal of, uh, my latest PSA order, what I got back, I got back, uh, his rookie card is 81 Donruss rookie card came back as a PSA seven. And, uh, I love Tim Raines. I'm so glad he made it to the hall of fame. Absolutely deserving. He was on base more times in his career than I think like Tony Gwynn and Wade Boggs were. He was a patient hitter. And just a star uh, uh, leadoff hitter. He could hit for power, but, but mostly known for his speed. And I, man, I love Tim Raines. And I'm so glad uh, that we pulled his card out of the pack. And all due respect to, to Tim Wick, to, uh, to Dave Winfield, this is going to be the last card that we look at today. Uh, next up is I'm going to kind of fly through these. Joe Joe Orsalak. Don't really know anything about Joe. It's not a very good era for the Orioles, as we've mentioned before. Keith Miller, don't really know Keith. Last card is Steve Sachs, who we uh, we pulled his rookie card out of the uh, box of 82 Tops Trader. I also got that back from PSA this week. So, um, you know, Steve Sachs, good career. 88 Dodgers, part of that, part of that team. And uh, then eventually also played with the Yankees. But that is going to do it for this edition of Wax Pack Wisdom and this pack of 1989 Tops that features this awesome card of Tim Rock Reigns gotta love it um tell us what you thought of this break what's your favorite card we pulled today do you have a story about one of the players in this pack leave us a comment and let us know we'd love to hear it if you enjoyed this video we invite you to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our wax pack wisdom content in the video description you can find links to where you can follow wax pack wisdom on all social media channels you'll also find a link to a list of our favorite nonprofits and charities if you enjoyed this video please consider a donation to one of those organizations 
it would mean a lot to us. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time on Wax Pack Wisdom. Take care.